There was a anonymity that I appreciated in the past. Think about how the old internet was back when everything felt kind of anonymous. When things that happened on the internet didn't really feel like they were particularly traceable. Everyone was kind of hidden behind their keyboards and much of what happened at the computer was in fact completely anonymous because it happened offline. Think about getting into a car, an old car, that doesn't have any advanced navigation in it. It doesn't have anything that's going to call home. It doesn't have anything that's going to connect to the internet. It's just an old car. And it's true, it doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles. But compare that to the concept of a smart car. It knows when you should get an oil change. It knows if you've been speeding. It knows where you've been going. And the government could turn it off if somebody reported your car as stolen or something like that. I'm not saying that these are bad things because as new technology becomes available, we use it. And quite often, it gives us a positive experience. Things like OnStar, for example, are a great way to make your car connected so that you can maybe have a safer driving experience or be able to call emergency services conveniently if you got into a serious accident. But maybe one of the problems with a lot of technology packages is that they're presented to us in the most positive of possible light. We're told, well, why don't you get this service? Because it'll be there for you if you ever need it to be. But what isn't talked about is what happens when it's there when you don't want it to be? What happens when it's not that you reported your car is stolen and you're able to remotely deactivate it, but instead you find yourself in some sort of a technology-driven dystopia and someone can deactivate your means of transportation just because you held an opinion that wasn't approved by the government. That sounds wild and ridiculous, and yet, even if it's not likely that this would happen, it's now within the realm of technological possibility that it certainly could happen. And so we have begun to move more and more into a time when privacy is not assured. Privacy is the exception to the rule, not the norm. And we have AI joining the scene. Now, I think to illustrate my point, I'm going to bring up Nazi Germany and the Gestapo. The Gestapo was sort of like Germany's CIA or FBI, something like that. It was an intelligence gathering organization and it, it became very popular for neighbors to report each other as being guilty of some sort of political misdoing. So people would, sometimes they would just start to report their neighbors without cause. No good reason at all. Just, I don't like my neighbor, so I'm going to say that my neighbor is doing something to undermine the government because the Gestapo had essentially put out a message that people should 
say something if they see something that's concerning. They created a culture of active reporting. And knowing how people like to gossip and rat, it worked very well. And people started reporting each other all the time to the point where no one felt safe saying anything or doing anything because something as simple as casually criticizing some minor aspect of what the government was doing could conceivably result in you being charged as a criminal guilty of crimes against the state. So people became very fearful about what sort of things they would do because they never really knew who was watching. And the interesting thing about this is that the Gestapo was actually understaffed and they did not have the means to adequately research a lot of the reports that came across their desk. But nobody knew that. So people's fear of the government in that particular situation actually was far greater than the government's power to enforce any actions. Since everybody thought that the government knew everything about them and was omnipresent, they sort of self-enforced the will and pleasure of the government because they thought everybody was working for the government. Everybody was going to report them. And they thought that all of those reports were potentially going to be worked. But the reality is only a small amount of the data that was brought to the attention of the Gestapo was actually actioned because the organization, the agency, was overwhelmed. The reason I bring all this up is because it's kind of the same today in the sense that you can have privacy in a crowd just because there's so many people in the crowd, you blend in. But what happens when artificial intelligence eliminates human moderation? So instead of needing that extra 80,000 IRS agents to improve auditing and enforcement for tax revenue, you can just have an AI intelligent algorithm that's going to deep dive into everyone's taxes all the time. And it's going to audit them with a higher level of efficiency than a human would be able to. And nobody's going to be able to do anything about it. Well, certainly, if your goal is accuracy in tax keeping, then that might be a positive thing. But it also creates concerns. It creates concerns when we start to move toward a time where everything we do, everything we believe, everything we say is managed by an algorithm that never sleeps or grows weary and is able to create a smart database that knows everything. Certainly there's a concern from a privacy standpoint, from a civil liberties standpoint. And when we talk about things like AI, you know, there's, there's always the talk about, well, what if artificial intelligence becomes so advanced that it is able to self-replicate, able to have self-determination, able to be conscious on some level, and basically to create a Borg-like machine species and destroy the human race? Well, maybe. Maybe, but not for a while. The reality is AI is just a tool. 
But the greatest risk is that it's a very, very powerful tool. More specifically, it's a very, very powerful tool that's held in the hands of people which have the same flawed tendencies that they always have had. Jealousy, the desire for power and control, the desire to suppress voices which are dissenting or with which they do not agree. And so the real concern is what happens when you give people too much power over others. What happens when the 1% is able to subjugate the 99% by leveraging the power of data analytics and artificial intelligence? Is that a concern? I think the answer is yes. I think we all can agree it is a concern. Not to mention other concerns related to artificial intelligence, which don't necessarily have to do with us losing our liberty. But they're still dystopian in their own way. Like the fact that it's really cool to think about being able to chat with an NPC using an AI to augment that interaction. Like, who wouldn't like that? I sure would. I was watching a video of Skyrim modding that shows that they figured out how to integrate a chatbot into Skyrim and load the backstories of all the NPCs into its reference database so that you can log into the game and actually talk to all of the characters and they know who they are and they will interact with you in a dynamic way so no conversation repeats itself no two conversations are the same essentially bringing a sense of real life into what would otherwise be a static world. And I can't help looking at that thinking there will probably come a time when AI technology becomes mainstream and average right out of the box in a lot of RPG games. And when that happens, why play with real people when you can have a better experience playing with an AI? When you can have a better conversation with an AI assistant or companion than you can have with your friends or your spouse, what is the point of having interaction between players or between people if AI has gotten advanced to the point where it's more useful to us than people are? Certainly that's true in the workplace. What starts off as being a convenience for people will soon turn into outsourcing people's jobs to machine learning. That's already happening, but it's going to probably happen a lot more. And it's going to be put on a fast track by all of the people who want to use a chat GPT like platform to facilitate their own laziness. The people who want to use a chat bot to write an email for them or to create a resume for them. That's fine until your employer realizes that you have no skill that your chat bot doesn't have. And it's easier just to make the chat bot do the entire thing and take you out of the equation. And I think there is a risk that we wind up being so lazy, so interested in depending on some something else to take work off of our plate, that we fast track the elimination of our own importance and relevance because we want to take the easy way, the comfortable way, and that could well wind up being a path 
that uh, eliminates us entirely and leaves us with pretty much nothing to show for it. And we see problems with technology having a significant impact on people's social lives because it's just so easy to withdraw from society. Even if you aren't of a nature to want to withdraw completely from society, even if you want to have meaningful relationships with other people, I'll tell you, it's very difficult to have meaningful relationships with other people when they don't take meaningful relationships seriously. When you live in a society which is essentially governed by the same principles as Instagram, when people feel like they can opt in or opt out whenever they want, it's very difficult to build permanent structures with temporary materials. And so increasingly, I think it is easy to just say, I'm not going to engage with fickle people. I will meet my needs through some other medium like some sort of an AI platform, AI companions, artificial intelligence in games, AI to replace artists, all sorts of different things come to mind, which are all signals that we're taking people out of the equation because we can count on software to be there for us when we want it to be but we can't really count on people for that that fickleness concerns me and i also think it's a vicious cycle because once you start to go down that path of realizing you can't really count on people so you find an alternative then it it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy so what exactly do we do about this now, i don't know i think that we have to have the conversation though i think that it's important to understand that you're not going to be able to stop progress from happening it's going to happen and as with all progress, there's good aspects of it, and then there's bad aspects. There's things that are problematic or concerning, but then there's also things which are pretty amazing, operating side by side. Now, maybe I'm all about the idea of being able to talk to a AI NPC in Skyrim. I think that that's pretty cool. But that doesn't mean that I'm comfortable with seeing privacy on the internet come to an end. When I see things like something about how the Elder Scrolls Online is using AI moderation to replace human moderation, I'm not very keen on that because I see a lot of risk for that to potentially be abused and misused in a way that eliminates and destroys player agency. I don't like that. And that doesn't mean that I'm anti-AI. But I think anytime you start to reduce the ability of individuals to express themselves, that's a concern. And anytime people start to jump on a bandwagon and they start to say something is all good, but they don't really want to hear any of the things that are potentially concerns, that's also a red flag. And I also think that we, we struggle to adapt. We struggle to adapt because we remember how things used to be. And every generation is this way. You say, well, back in the old days, it wasn't like that. Back in the old days, we had different values than we have today. That's fine, but 
the truth is times will change and you have to change with the times no matter how much it feels foreign it feels unfamiliar on some level you can't expect that things are just not going to change so there's that and there's not any assurance that we're going to be able to work through the challenges that lie ahead because we haven't ever experienced them before. There really is no precedent for seeing technology take over society by storm to the degree that it has for us in the last couple of decades. And I think that's the craziest thing of all, that you look at it and you think, well, you know, history repeats itself and things that are happening have happened before. In many cases, that's true. But what's also true is the fact that this particular phenomena of technology being uh, elevated to the level it is in our lives, that has never happened before. We don't know what the consequences of that it will be. And we could move forward into a bright new future. We could also move backwards into some sort of a strange dystopia. And there's going to be a lot of ethical, moral, spiritual sort of questions which get asked one way or the other as we navigate through what's ultimately a very transformational time in human history. To, to really reduce that to a black and white and say, well, you know, um, AI is bad. Well, that, that would be a one-sided perspective and that's not fair. But it is a very powerful tool. And I think in the short term, we have to ask the question of who should be trusted with that degree of power. And the conclusion has to be that no one really should be entrusted with that level of power. And so we have to be careful to maintain a framework of civil liberty in a time when it's probably easier than ever to lose that because there's such powerful tools out there that can be leveraged against individual liberty and individual freedom. And I think a lot of the threats to individual expression, individual um, autonomy and agency, they wind up being people who have an agenda and they really think that they are representing some higher purpose like they're not just trying to be productive and serve their customers and reflect the interests of the market in which they operate they have some sort of an agenda to kind of play God in people's lives. And if you give those people absolute power to be able to enforce things with the leverage of technology behind them, I think they can do a lot of very harmful things to people. So that's one reason why I think we just have to, we really need to be very skeptical about people who are trying to leverage technology to control people. Now, things like AI-powered moderation. Things like using smart vehicles that allow themselves to be remotely shut off by someone in a government agency. All of those sorts of things, even if they seem to offer some sort of front side benefit, the risk of them being eventually abused or used for a purpose other than what they were originally intended is very high. So for me, like I would rather have something that's a little bit more analog. You know, in gaming, I think there's a concern with things like as much as I love it, Steam libraries and all of the different things where 
there was a time when you would go down to the, to the software store, you'd get discs, you'd install them. And then you'd have this offline experience and the game was 100% installed on your computer. Now, you don't necessarily have ownership of the software you're using. Increasingly, even Microsoft Windows is continually a live service product. And it's very difficult to tell where the cloud begins and where your personal device ends. Things like cloud gaming become increasingly things on the horizon, which could promise benefits to players, but they could also move us further away from the empowerment of having your own system that runs on its own power and manages its own data and has its own privacy standards in your home. I don't think that we want to move rapidly toward a society where everything is documented, everything is indexed, everything is on some sort of a blockchain or a ledger, and there is no aspect of your personal data that can't be mined, sold, and used as a form of marketing or as a form of political manipulation. We have a lot of liberty in the United States and in the West that people in countries like China probably don't have. And, and now I will make a, a caveat here just to say I don't think people's lives in China necessarily are terrible. I'm not trying to be anti-Chinese here. But what I am saying is that there's a lot of things that happen in that country from a control and digital, digital surveillance perspective that we wouldn't probably be comfortable with. And yes, that does have an effect on freedom of expression and civil liberties. So what do we do? Well, I don't know. It's not really so much about finding a solution to this stuff, I think, as it is keeping it a conversation that we're having. We need to be skeptical to a point about all of those things that could become a threat to our liberty in society. And at least we need to continue to talk about them. Whether we know what to do about all this stuff, I don't know. Don't know what the solution is. But I definitely think there's more to it than just saying, oh, well, that's cool. It's a new AI thing coming out. Well, yeah, it is cool. But it could also be dangerous to society. And if we don't talk about that, I think we're overlooking a pretty big elephant in the room. So what do you think about AI? What do you think the solution is? What is the line you think should be drawn in the sand? Or should there be a line drawn in the sand? It's a very complicated uh, topic. It's something I think we've, we've explored in a lot of science fiction already to some degree, one way or the other. But now I think increasingly we're moving toward a time in our growth as a society where a lot of these abstract questions that we never really had to face in the past we now kind of do you know because things that 10 or 20 years ago would have just been pie in the sky science fiction hypotheticals now they're things that we read about every day in the news even if it was something like drone warfare being able to send remote control drones that are flown like a video game, being able to send them into a war zone. Not, not that long ago, those would have been unheard of too, you know? 
So there's just so much stuff like that where the world is changing, changing faster than any other generation in history has seen it change. And we've got this armchair view to go about our daily lives experiencing this phenomenon. Only time can tell what, it, what it'll actually mean. In any case, maybe there is a lesson, and that lesson is we shouldn't worry about these things too much. Because trying to solve the problems of the world, especially the problems which haven't yet arrived, can be a very overwhelming task. Thankfully for most of us, it's not really a task that we have to worry too much about, because in our small lives, we don't have to solve all of the problems that exist in the world. As always, try to enjoy your journey wherever you find yourself. Till next time, thanks for watching.